Nancy Drew, Weirdness at Waverly Academy. A story by Argelfonf. Chapter 26, Getting Mel's Picture. Nancy knocked on Mel's door. Come on in, Mel called. Nancy walked inside and flinched slightly when she saw all the pink in Mel's room. As usual, Mel was playing the cello instead of studying. Becca the new girl, what's going on? Mel asked. Not much, Nancy said. I was just talking to Rachel and she's... interesting. How well do you know her? Not well, Mel said. We don't hang out. How come? Nancy asked. We have nothing in common, Mel said. Plus, there's something about her that's a little... off. Yeah, Nancy said. When I talked to her just now, she acted like she had never seen me before. It was weird. She's always been a little strange, Mel said. I'm surprised her forgetfulness hasn't impacted her grades. In fact, when it comes to being valedictorian, it's a mystery how she ever made it this far. Mystery? Nancy asked. I love mysteries! I've always dreamed about being a detective! That's cool, Mel said. Maybe you can start by solving the mystery of the black cat. Although that's not really a mystery, because it's so obvious it's Izzy. Ah, yes, Izzy, Nancy said, rubbing her chin in what she hoped was a detective-like fashion. Does anyone else think she's the culprit? Megan, my missing roommate, Mel said. She thinks it's Izzy, too, although that's because she hates Izzy for stealing her boyfriend. Izzy's a boyfriend stealer? Nancy gasped. What? How did she become the most popular girl in school? Beats me, Mel said. I don't really follow the whole popularity scene. Ah, but soon Becca Sawyer is going to catch the black cat, and then I'll be the most popular girl in school, Nancy said. Everyone will be like Izzy Romero, more like Frizzy Romero, because my hair is way awesomer than hers. Uh, sure, Becca. Mel said, whatever you say. You know you're starting to sound like your roommate, right? Huh? Nancy asked. I sound like Kareem? Yeah, you sound like you're obsessed with being popular and fitting in, Mel said. I know it's your first day here, but just relax. It's not like making friends is a race or anything. Uh, right, Nancy said. Her plane back home to River Heights left when the winter study break ended, but nobody else knew that. Anyway, I came here because I need to take your picture. It's for a page on the school website that I'm helping with. The school wants my picture on its website? Mel asked. Groovy. Blast away. Nancy took out her cell phone, then took a picture of Mel smiling. Perfect, Nancy said. I need a photo of your roommate, too. Do you have one? Sure don't, Mel said, but Leela Yadav might. She and Megan have been palling around a lot downstairs lately. Try checking the rec room. Chapter 27, Rachel's Math Notebook. There was only one more thing that Nancy had to talk to Mel Corbelis about. I need to get Rachel's math notebook from you, Nancy said. Sure, Mel said. As soon as I remember where I put it... Mel thought for a moment. Nuts, I left it in the library. That's okay, Nancy said. I can go get it. Why do you want her math notebook? Mel asked. You haven't even started taking classes yet. Well, actually, um, Nancy said, trying to think of a good excuse. I like collecting notebooks, Nancy guessed. Mel used her valedictorian-worthy brains to come up with an explanation. Rachel sent you to get it for her because she didn't want to talk to me in person, Mel said. You're right, Nancy said. Is she mad at you or something? I don't treat her any differently than I treat anybody else here, Mel said. In other words, for the most part, I totally ignore her. I don't know what her problem is. Maybe she's allergic to cellos. Nancy said. I don't think so, Mel said. Well, I can ask her when I give her back her notebook, Nancy said. See ya. Nancy waved goodbye to Mel and returned to the school library. 
The library was rather big, and Nancy had no idea where exactly Rachel's notebook was. I'll look it up in the library catalog, Nancy said. She went to the computer and searched for Rachel's math notebook, but no results came up. Aww, Nancy said. Nancy wandered around the library for a while, until she eventually found the lost and found drawer. The drawer was locked with a four-digit combination lock. On the bottom of the drawer were some Roman numerals. Let's see, that's 2641, Nancy said, reading the number. That can't be the combination to the lock, though, right? No one would be stupid enough to write the combination two inches below the lock. That's the least secure lock system ever. Nancy tried out the combination 2641, and it worked. Inside the drawer were some lawn gnomes and Rachel's math notebook. No way, Nancy said. If only all my mysteries were this easy to solve. Prize in hand, Nancy went upstairs to Rachel's room and knocked on the door. You can come in, Rachel said. Nancy went inside. As usual, Rachel was on her bed typing on a computer. You've got my math notebook, Rachel said. Fab, I'll take that. Nancy gave the notebook to Rachel. I left it in the library, she said. What do you have against Mel, anyway? Huh? Rachel asked. Nothing. Mel's the closest friend I have here. But earlier you said you didn't want to deal with her, Nancy said. Oh no, I said I was too busy to deal with her, Rachel said. Leaving my room and going down the hall is a major hassle, you know? Anyway, here's the Victorian book. Rachel thrust the book into Nancy's hands. I gotta get back to studying, Rachel said. See you. Nancy left the room, suspicious that Rachel had just given her the brush off. What could Rachel be hiding? Were Rachel and Mel's secret best friends or something? Chapter 28. Getting the Menu Nancy flipped through the book on Victorian dining. It had a section on the various types of silverware. Didn't I see a display case here with a bunch of forks and knives, Nancy thought as she flipped a few pages. A student ID belonging to an Amber Sullivan fell out of the book. Nancy pocketed the ID card as she headed downstairs, looking for the display case. The display case was near the doors to the library. It was locked, and half of the display was missing. A sign which read, Checked out to El Yadav, was in the place of the missing display. So Nancy returned to the rec room, where Leila Yadav was busy playing with the soccer ball. Hey, Nancy said. Becca, hi, Leila said. What's up? Not much, Nancy said. I'm just wandering around, getting a sense of where everything is. That's cool, Leila said. Have you checked out any of the other buildings on campus? Not really, Nancy said. I tried to leave Ramsey Hall earlier, but when I got too far away, I ended up running into an invisible wall. It was kind of weird, so I decided to go back here and check out the display cases instead. I noticed you took something from one of them? Poor Leela looked a little confused at Nancy's invisible wall comment, but she eventually shrugged. Yeah, I borrowed an old menu, Leela said. I needed it for this lame nutrition paper I had to write. I keep forgetting to put it back. Can I see it? Nancy asked. Sure, Layla said. As a matter of fact, I've got it right here. But before I give it to you, you have to beat me at a game. What, again? Nancy asked. Layla nodded. What'll it be, air hockey or scram? Nancy wasn't sure what scram was. Scram was the word she usually used whenever someone tried to force her to do chores for them. But it didn't seem appropriate in this situation. So she picked air hockey. Leela got the first shot. Nancy tried to hit the puck, but she missed it entirely, and the puck went in. On the next shot, Nancy missed the puck again. The puck bounced off the boards and back to Leela's side of the table. Leela shot it in Nancy's goal. Two nothing, Leela said. She took another shot, and this time, Nancy managed to hit the puck with her mallet. Yay, I hit the puck, Nancy said. Then the puck bounced right off Nancy's mallet and into her own goal. Darn, Nancy said. Leela decided to give Nancy the next shot. Nancy hit the puck into the corner of the board where it stopped. Nancy jammed her mallet next to the puck, making sure it couldn't get loose. 
Oh no, it's stuck, she said. Well, looks like we can't play anymore. What a shame. It's not stuck, Leela said. You can pick it up and... Looks like we can't play anymore, Nancy repeated, growling. Uh, sure, Leela said. Let's call it a tie then. Here's that menu you wanted. Leela gave Nancy the menu. Great, thanks, Nancy said.